who has a master's degree in classical guitar, performance? Me, maybe you, but definitely me. Probably you, but definitely me. So that's why I'm clicking this video because if you're a self-respecting classical guitarist, you've probably played a lot of Terrega. I know I have. There are some, some uh, just cornerstone composers of classical guitar people who do lots of small pieces and studies and just wrote lots of shit from, from beginner to expert level. Carcassi, Soar, Giuliani, Terrega, um, Soar, did I mention Soar? Probably did. Soar in there. And then you've got lots of people that write lots of uh, just crazy advanced pieces, uh, Albanez and Barrios, and of course, you know, people that didn't write for guitar but have been transcribed like Bach. But Terrega really is one of the founding composers of classical guitar. So I'm interested to see what the five levels of Terrega are. I, I'm going to have to guess, just without even thinking about it, that Capriccio... Capriccio's by Terrega, right? Capriccio's gotta be by Terrega. Sometimes I forget who composed this stuff, I get it mixed up in my head, but Capriccio's gotta be. And then Lagrima gotta be in there. I wonder if Adelita will be in there. Uh, oh, there might be a grand solo. I'm curious. Anyway, let's fucking go. Forever. So I wanted to dedicate a video to whom I and many others consider to be the godfather of classical guitar. Hey. This iconic picture of Targa hangs in most guitar school rooms it's true. and inspires countless guitarists to dive into the magic of his pieces. Mm, no, I was never inspired by his picture. I heard other people playing his stuff and it was dope. I will play five of them in increasing difficulty. I was going to play all five? I don't know if I want to... Guys, I might skip a little bit. I don't necessarily want to hear him play the entirety of the pieces. In fact, I don't. I'm letting you know that right now. I'm not going to listen to full compositions. I just want to see his ordering and the structure of what he's doing. And I will end the video with perhaps the most beautiful composition ever written for guitar, but also one of the hardest, which I struggle with even to this day. We shall begin this journey with Lagrima which means teardrop in Spanish. Yeah, it's a yeah, very yeah. beautiful piece that is not too hard to play once you have acquired some skill on the guitar. And that's all I need to hear of that piece. I've played this. This is piece is pretty simple and people love it. Renata loves this fucking piece. This this thing all the time. What key, uh, what key is it? See, it does get a little, like, immediately right here, this is a little harder in the beginning. That's actually harder than it seems, so I'm interested that that's piece number one. Because it's slow and it's pretty, people think it's pretty easy. It's definitely not very hard. But God, I don't know how, I mean... You go play it. The middle part's a little... Oh, not... don't want to hear all this. Next I will play Adelita. Which... Ah, I called two of them already! These two pieces, I don't know if he's going to say it, but it's really common in concert to play both of these pieces back to back. Because they're short, and they kind of have the same tempo, they kind of work together, and people typically play them in that order. They play Lagerba and then Adelita. Uh, back to back. Uh, and in fact, in the Parkening book, these two pieces are side by side. When, you, when you're on that section, one's on the left, one's on the right, and they're both one page. Which is a great piece for developing. There's one chord in here that is hard as fuck. It's hard as fuck. It's got this bar with this quick ornamentation on it. It is definitely not easy. And most people that I get to, to try to play this piece as a study, that chord kicks everyone in the dick. Uh, and even a virtuoso player, Jason Vio, came to the university and we were all hanging out. And, uh, and he even said that he hates that chord and he's a virtuosic monster. In your musicality it may not have due to the main. Plays well, though. I just want the orders, man. I'm sorry. I don't, if you don't know these pieces, go back and watch them on your own time. Oh, wait, where's the chord? Hold on. Wait, where's the chord? Here, here it is. Right there. 
That shit is way harder than the rest of the piece. By far, way harder than everything else in the piece. What's next? What's next? I doubt I'll have played everything he's played here. This might be the end of it. I wonder if they know the next piece. No, that's he's on the repeat. Level 3. For the third level, I have chosen the most recognizable piece by Tarrega. Capriccio. But perhaps not for the reason you think. Part of the piece reached worldwide fame due to Nokia using it as a ringtone. Sound familiar? Here is Gran Vals. Uh, which means waltz. The big waltz. I actually don't think I played this piece. No, I don't think I did. That's a good piece. That is a good piece. I yeah, I definitely never I've definitely never performed it. I might have played like a little bit of it just to see what it was like. There's so much music out there that a lot of times like I'm I'm a big proponent of unless a teacher's making you do something, pick pieces you love because you're gonna have to work so hard and work for a very long time. It's really common. Um let's say you're gonna play four hard pieces or five hard pieces. It's not uncommon at all for it to take four months to get four to five really hard pieces from start to finish. So if you're only going to play five songs, I suggest that you fucking love them. I don't love that song. I think it's beautiful, but I don't love it. Therefore, I'm not going to devote the time to do it. What's next? You know, instead of going down a YouTube wormhole, why not spend your time learning a new skill? Skillshare's an on launch. No, oh, he's plugging it. He got a sponsor. He got a sponsor. Join the skill of other Skillshare. Level four. What's level four? We will continue with Capriccio Arabe. Oh, the Capriccio. Hey, he wants to play it. Since we were just talking about it. Hold the guitar with my left hand because I don't have a brace. I don't have a brace on it. A, that's a classic. And I love that song. That is a classic. Pretty much every class guitar on earth will play that song. It's like pure Elise for piano or something. One of Tariga's most played and famous pieces for guitar, which every student at some point in his journey will play. It is hauntingly beautiful. It's slowly. So what's number five? <laughs> Which means... Oh, Recuerdos! I disagree. I disagree. Recuerdos is only hard if you can't play tremolo. If you can play tremolo, it's just fucking tremolo. It's just a tremolo piece. I think your pre is harder to play and it's harder to play well. But a lot of people have a problem with their tremolo. And if you can't play tremolo then the entire time you play this piece, it just sucks. So, you know, this, uh, which my tremolo is probably weak right now, but... It's just that shit. It's like that for fucking three minutes. But if you got a tremolo, and I'm drunk, and tired, and haven't practiced, and I got a tremolo, and if I got a tremolo, you can get a tremolo. And then it's just memorization. It's not really... I guess stamina, so you can do, you have to do the tremolo the whole, tremolo the whole time. So that's his five. Anyways, you can get him started off. Great. I'm really well. Peace. He has a, he has a good tremolo. We were watching uh, somebody the other day who had a uh, kind of sloppy tremolo. Really good player, but the tremolo was kind of bad. This guy's tremolo is pretty good. I want to actually, it must be better than average. I want to hear a little bit more of his tremolo. Okay. 
Okay, so these, this is probably my ending comments on this. Is that if you can get your tremolo as good as his, you should be happy. That's a solid tremolo. That is a solid tremolo. The only thing I would say about it is an opinion. I just have an opinion on it. It's not something... So if you don't like my opinion, throw it out. Because it's just an opinion. Because tremolo is steady 16th... One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a five e and a digga 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 digga. And this entire piece is tremolo. I am not really a big fan of keeping the speed the same throughout the piece because then it's just digga 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 digga. It's pretty, but it's digga 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 for the whole time. So I'm kind of a fan of slowing down and speeding up and slowing down and speeding up and finding places to do that a little bit just so that way it's not the same constant barrage of 16th notes. But that's an opinion, and a lot of people would disagree. There are a lot of people who would say, find the best tempo and maintain that one tempo throughout the entirety of the piece. Just a difference in opinion. I say change it. Plus, plus, the correct speed of this piece is pretty universal. There's a pretty solid window that everyone's gonna play this speed in, like plus or minus 5%, which means that if you nail it, you're really just gonna sound like the other 100,000 guitarists who can play the piece. So I'm also a fan of taking some risks because if your risks pay off, then you will have an audience that prefers your music over someone else's. Yes, some people will hate your decisions, but it gives an opportunity for you to be different and for people to like it. So right now, this guy sounds great. He sounds solid. He sounds awesome. If he had a PhD in classical guitar, I would not be surprised. He seems to know his shit and he seems to play very, very well. However, here's the issue. If I was gonna listen to Recuerdos and he's keeping the speed constant and he's just playing it the way it's always played, then I'm not gonna listen to him. I'm gonna go listen to, you know, fucking Segovia or Williams or somebody else play it who's the best in the world. I'm only gonna listen to him play it if he does something different that they don't do. That's the problem with playing classical music when there's like decades and decades of recordings that you can go back and listen to is that when you can listen to the best that have ever done it, why would you listen to someone else do it? That's my, it's my own problem too. That's why you don't see me making a lot of classical guitar videos is because I'm like, why would someone choose to listen to me play it when they can go hear 10 other better versions? I need to do something different with it, which is challenging. It's challenging to take risks and have them pay off. It's also extremely fucking time consuming. Anyways, that's the video. This shit's done.